This case is absolutely horrifying, and it took more than 60 years to find the victim's identity. This is the story of the four-year-old boy found dead in a box. How was the body discovered? On February 23rd, 1957, a student at LaSalle College stumbled upon the boy in the box. While trying to check on girls enrolled at the Sisters of Good Shepherd, a home for wayward young girls, he noticed a box in the middle of the brush and came upon a child's head, but mistook it for a doll and went on his way. Soon after, the young man heard about the disappearance of a little girl in New Jersey, which raised a question in his head. What if the head he had found in the brush belonged to a human body? After returning to the scene, he discovered his suspicions were correct and called the police. Officers arriving on the scene found the body of a boy between the ages of four and six, naked and wrapped in a flannel blanket inside a JC Penney box. Investigators determined that the boy in the box was malnourished and beaten to death. But even if they quickly found the cause of death, it took them decades to identify the victim. Theories begin. The discovery of the boy in the box gave rise to all kinds of theories. Some people claimed that the body belonged to a Hungarian refugee who had been the victim of a kidnapping in 1955. Another theory sought to link the murder to workers at a local carnival. Unfortunately, none of these leads led investigators any closer to the truth, at least until the arrival of a mysterious woman who claimed to be the daughter of the culprit. In 2002, 40 years after the tragedy, a woman identified as M told investigators that her abusive mother had purchased the child from another family in 1954. The boy, whom she called Jonathan, had been physically and sexually abused until the night little Johnny vomited up his baked beans and her mother beat him to death in a rage. The story told by M was credible since investigators found baked beans in the victim's stomach. The woman also explained that his mother had tried to bathe him after beating him which explains why Jonathan had pruny fingers. The witness told authorities that her mother and father had repeatedly sexually abused her while keeping the boy locked in the basement of the house for physical purposes, given that he had an intellectual disability. But even after this compelling testimony, the police ignored their best lead since the woman had mental health issues. Thus, they missed the best chance they had to solve the case. Sadly, the stigma towards people with mental illness allows cases like this to go unsolved. But what if M's parents were not the culprits, and she was the perpetrator of this crime? Apparently, the investigators did not consider this possibility, or simply dismissed it. Eventually, time passed until Philadelphia police officers finally announced that they could give the body a name. The victim, Joseph Augustus Zarelli. It was December 8, 2022, when Philadelphia Police Department Commissioner Daniel Outlaw announced a breakthrough in the case and said the boy found dead in 1957 was named Joseph Augustus Zarelli. Even after 65 years of this case, generations of investigators did not give up until they found the truth. But how did they identify the victim after all this time? According to the police press conference, Zarelli could be identified thanks to genetic genealogy, which is a method that combines genetics with genealogy to prove or estimate the ancestry of a human. Joseph's DNA, or Jonathan as M used to call him, was loaded into a genetic database which led detectives to find relatives on his mother's side. After searching several birth records, they also identified his father and discovered that Zarelli had three siblings. Investigators discovered that Zarelli was born on January 13, 1953, proving he was four years old at his death. Unfortunately, the culprit was never found. However, that does not mean that the case is closed. Even to this day, there are still many questions to be answered about Zarelli's life and death. That's why officials refuse to speculate on Zarelli's killer, but claim to have their suspicions. The discovery of the boy's identity in the box closed one chapter in Philadelphia police history, but opened a new one. Let's pray that the victim of this case can find peace in heaven and that his killer may burn in hell.